Good morning. Yo. I made you a co-host. We're both co-hosts, all right? Oh, perfect. And we already got an attendee in here. Awesome. We do? Yeah, what do we got? I got a... Uh... Boom, boom, boom. There we go. We got a Sean Davis in here. Good morning, Sean. Or I guess good afternoon, Sean, depending on what time. Of I don't know if he can hear us yet, Kenny. We didn't start the. Maybe you can. Hmm. Derek hopping in too. Boom, 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 boom. You know, it's been a while since I used this platform. I'm Oh, Sean raised the hand. I think you can hear us. Oh, all right, cool. Good stuff. Cool. So we're live, live from New York and live from California. There you go. There you go. Well, well I haven't shared my screen yet, so. I could share. I could share the screen. Okay, perfect. I've got it uh, here as a backup too. I downloaded it just in case. There we go, buddy. All right. I feel like going for a run today. That'd be, if I did that again, that would be three days in a row. That would be like kind of crazy. Oh, I don't think it's crazy. I think it's great. I have, a, I'm, I, have a, I have a desire to go outside. It's beautiful out. Yeah, it's nice here, too. Good temperature. You excited? I'm ready to roll here. I'm so excited. Yeah. You know what? You want to know how I got excited? How'd you get excited? By mowing my lawn. <laughs> By mowing your lawn? Yeah. A lot of people think I'm crazy, man, but I enjoy mowing the lawn. Do you really? I do. Do you have a riding mower? No. If I had a ride, riding motor, a riding mower, a, a riding mower, it might take me all of 14 seconds to mow my lawn. Really? There's not a lot to do. I just... I like the edging. I like making it perfect. Do you have a what? What do you have? Electric mower? You have an EV? No, no. Gas powered? Yeah, I've had it for a long time. Honda baby runs forever. I don't have any one anymore. Nothing, zero. It's not a bad spot to be. No, I used to. I used to. Well, I, when I used to live, I didn't. Twenty nine years ago, I had a, a house in a different town. I had a big yard, and it took me like two and a half hours to do everything. It's crazy. And I had a riding mower to do that, but uh, I got tired of that pretty quickly. <laughs> I, still, I like it. I just have a, I have a garden. I, I prefer to, I work on, I have a flower garden. I work on my garden. I like that. That's therapeutic for me. I'm, uh, flowers. I got I'm, 35 potted flower yeah. plants right now. 35 pots of flowers. Oof. Plants, greens, you know, like all different kinds of stuff. I like that. I go to go to Lowe's and I said, oh, let me try this. Let me try this. And that one, my most I ever had was 85 pot, pots. That's too much. <laughs> that was overkill. I've, uh, I'm the opposite. In my backyard, I got zero and I have uh, turf as my grass. Turf? Oh, yeah. yeah. You had, you had it just, you just had it installed, right? Not yeah. long ago, yeah. right? I'm not great. Yeah. That's great. It's always perfectly mowed. <laughs> I never have to worry about it. Why don't you? Why, why don't you have your kids do it? Um. Now, now you sound like my dad. He says the same thing. He said you should be having little Darren do that. I'm like, he does a lot of his own chores, I think. But it's one of those things that I really enjoy. Just like you said, I just you it, like to do I, that. Give yeah. you a sense of. It gives you, you know what? It's like grilling. It's like a guy grilling outside. You have 
I have, I feel I'm at the grill. I have complete control over life. Yeah. And I just feel like it's almost, it's like going for a run. It's like working out. It's just one of those things where when I do it, I feel like I accomplished something good today. Yeah. It was a small thing. And I, I'm only the only one that notices. Uh, Doreen and I were talking about that last night. Um, and I was saying, talking about working, you know, work in general, when did you start working? I said, well, I had a paper route when I was like 10, 11 years old. Yeah. Right. I used to deliver pay. They don't do that anymore. I don't think paper routes. Nobody uses, nobody reads newspapers. <laughs> I the cars going by, but man, it's probably been 10 years throwing papers out, out the window at houses. Then when I got a little older, I cut, I cut lawns. I had regular clients. I would go cut their lawn for them. Trim their edges, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. One of, one of my neighbors, his kids have cornered the market out here in our neighborhood. They're all over it. Oh, really? Cutting, cutting lawns? Oh, yeah. Sunday, you see the two of them pushing along, and then they bring their own their own lawnmower. Yep, yeah, they got the the weed whacker and the blower and everything, and then oh, so really? Kids will join them. There'll be four or five of them. And my son's been out there with them, and they're going around. And they're splitting the money and everything. And I say to my kid, I go, "Huh? So you just show up and piggyback on the back and collect some of the profits?" And he goes. Yeah, I mean, I'm keeping everybody laughing while we're doing everything. I go, <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> a lot like me, kid. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that is funny. It's fun. And we used to wash cars. I remember that we washed cars. And then as I got older, as I got older, then I started painting houses. Fundraising for soccer tournaments. We used to have big car washes. Mm -hmm. Then by the time I got to be 16, 17, I worked in a Sunoco gas station about a half a mile from the house yeah and uh i don't know how those guys made any money because it was just me and my buddies <laughs> we worked on the weekends and we worked the graveyard shift you know at night and everything we close it i don't know we, it was open pretty late and we yeah. would stay there and i don't know how they made any money we were just fooling around and three minutes to go yeah so um did you happen to get a chance to listen to that recorded phone call? I didn't. I didn't listen to it yet. I, I started to. And I said, "No, let me focus on this first. Yeah, I wanted to. Sense. You could talk about it. This is your brother, right? Yep. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I just stumbled upon it. it was four years ago. It was awesome, and it's just, it was just. It was cool to hear that intro and that greeting, and and just you could tell he practiced our approach and he used it. And so it you know what I'm going to do for Sean because he's he's the only one here right now. This is a um we're doing this in the middle of busy season oh here comes i we could allow them to talk i suppose right let's try it sean allow to talk if you want and callie welcome right. folks Thank you're you. in since we have a small he's, group a small he's group he's coming around to check he thinks he left him in the car Oh. All right. Callie, you're live on uh, in the webinar. Oh, just sorry. So you know. That's, all, That's right. all right. That's all right. We just wanted to say howdy. We just wanted to say hi to some people. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we do these webinars. We have like a hundred people, and you can't do that. But uh, now there's only a few of us, and uh, we're we're this is a we're going to go through it. We're going to blast through it. But this is like a, a test run for us because we we're going to go back and do some some webinars with tire review and uh, tire business magazine like that. We work with them a lot. And uh, uh, so what I want to do, and here comes Michael, we'll allow Michael, Michael's in. Michael, one of our, our illustrious trainers. Michael and I had a great tire sales training session this morning with some students. Oh yeah. Great. That's awesome. Michael, that 10 seconds, 10 seconds to go, Darren. <laughs> Here we go, buddy. Good afternoon. Uncle Dan here to our webinar. Why is selling tires such a pain? First, let me ask a question. Can you see the screen? Can all of you see the screen? Maybe a show of uh, a show of hands. Yeah. Um, yes, you can see it. All right, cool. Beautiful. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, I'm Dan Malloy, and this is my my compatriot. Darren McClay and the show really is about Darren McClay because he is the tire guru. And uh, 
So I, I want to share a little bit about Darren because uh, I was told by somebody in his family, he was actually born in the service bays of his grandpa's tire store. And, uh, and he teethed on the tires that were in the showroom. He used to chew on them. That's how he teethed. Is that true, Darren? I still do. You know, occasionally <laughs> bad habits, I just chew on a tire every once in a while. <laughs> you still do. But he was ex a partner and executive vice president at McClay's Tire and Automotive, where he grew up for mm -hmm. many years. And he'll talk about that. And he was a member of the board of directors for the independent tire dealer group and a founder and inaugural chairperson for the independent ITDG next gen committee and a top performer and contributor to DSP 20 group, a director of automotive uh, repair for AAA, Northern California, um, Nevada and uh, Utah. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thrilled for the past year, executive vice president and general manager for Malloy Business Development Group. Man, you know, say hello, Darren. Howdy. How's everybody doing? <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. That was too much. We could we could have shortened that down. There you go. Now you're getting to the meat and potatoes of my life. This, this is an actual photograph of Darren, one of Darren's stores from uh, about 2015. Which one are you in this photograph? Uh, I mean, we joked that I'm the guy under the hood, but I feel like a lot of times I was the guy on the phone right there. I think you're the guy at the counter. I didn't know you smoked. Back in the day, there's a cigarette hanging out of your mouth. But well, that's that habit I was talking about, chewing on the tire. You know, I never saw the cigarettes until just now. I hadn't seen that. But anyway, people always joke. I mean, it's a great cartoon. By the way, I just want to say to let everybody know that we're, we're committed to a 30-minute webinar. So we'll, we'll be done. We're, I guarantee we're going to be done by, by 2.30. And we want to go through this quickly. We want to have some fun with it, et cetera. But, you know, the other thing you'll notice in this photograph that there's no computer on the uh, counter. That's because Darren kept all the, all the SKU information and the tire prices and inventory in his head. Yes. yes. Anyway, this is your slide, buddy. Why are we doing this webinar? Why are we, why are we so committed to to uh, helping dealers improve tire sales, I, I think it's it's the heading in our whole webinar. Why is why are selling why is selling tires such a pain? And I mean, to me, the way I was brought up, it shouldn't be, and it doesn't have to be. And I think for everything that's happened in our industry going forward, you got to focus on tire sales. I mean, it is low hanging fruit as far as developing long time committed loyal customer base. You know, our, our company um, that my grandpa and dad started, uh, it was built on the back of selling tires. I mean, that's how we got to where we were. And we built the business up seven locations in Northern California. We did commercial truck, farm and ag tires. We did tires on your wheelbarrow. We did them on your cars. And the whole automotive repair side of our business grew over time. But we started as a general tire. We were McClay's general tire. Really? Wow. Okay. And that's how it all started. And, you know, a lot of businesses are, have gone through the same thing. We're, we're not really unique in that aspect. Yeah, we started doing tires. We started doing brakes and suspension. We added on more and we grew the business and eventually we successfully sold it. Um, but I've noticed even through, through when we were still around and other businesses, it seems like the focus has shifted. You know, fluid exchanges became very lucrative, very high gross profits, selling maintenance, you know, you get factory scheduled maintenance services that's selling that and, and it was easier. You know, there wasn't a lot of choice. Someone gets towed in, they need an alternator, you sell the alternator. So the focus shifted to getting the gross profit and the net profit now. And I think we've lost focus on the foundation that got us to where we were. Yes. And I, I noticed that most dealers that we, they struggle with, with tire sales. Yep. They just struggle with it, you know, and uh, from what I hear, tell me if, if you're hearing different, that Tire unit sales are pretty flat nationwide, or in, in many cases, going down. I think the big manufacturers are reporting that sales are have declined a bit. So, yeah, you know, and, and, and I, go and ahead. You ask why is you know a lot of the tire discounters, discount tire, Les Schwab, whoever it is, you know, they've started opening stores. And I say, okay, I, I understand that, but just because someone throws a new sign that says tire sales sold here, suddenly your customers just start going there. Or did you not really have a lock on that customer base in the first time? And someone just came to town and may just be selling tires and focusing a little bit harder um, on it than you are in your shop. And I think, you know, wh why is it such a pain to answer the question in the headline? There's no approach. 
There's no practice. There's no training. There's no emphasis. Well, I think there, uh, you know, I look at it like that. I say lack of effective training from the tire industry. And I think that's the next bullet. I think mostly they focus on, you know, the features and benefits or the technology or whatever, but not on the relationship piece Mm -hmm. with the customer, not even close, you know, and uh, they don't have a why. I think to your point, you said they lost focus on, they lost their why. Mm -hmm. Why are we in the tire business at all? You know, and, uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully, as they as we go through this, that people will, will rediscover their why, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this is something near and dear to my heart because we measure this stuff. Right. And these, these are the facts. We've been measuring this for 20 years. Right. My claim is that the, the closing percentages. What does that mean? It means that for commerce to happen, there has to be an exchange of commitments. So what we're measuring when I say tire closing percentage is on average between 20 and 30% in a particular store, it means that they're only making commitments, exchanging commitments 20 to 30% of the time with those customers to come in. Yet that's on tires, 20 to 30%, where service is 50 to 70%. And why do you think there's such a discrepancy? Why is there such a big difference between tires and everything else? For, like for me, I mean, I yeah. know when someone's calling for service, it's usually an emergency. It's an immediate need. It's on the side of the road. It's there's a, little, a breakdown. There's a problem. The car is not bodies. working. Yeah. Now tires. Hey, I blew out a tire. I'm on the side of the road. Okay. I got to get a tire, but tires is a little bit different animal. It's, it's not like I got towed in. And my car doesn't start. And now you've looked at it. You told me what I need. And okay, I need the alternator or I need the fuel pump. There's no choice. Tires are okay. I know I'm getting close to needing tires. I don't need to buy them today. I don't have to make a choice today. And I'm supposed as a customer, I'm supposed to know something about tires. So I should have an opinion on what tires I'm buying. So the process is completely different. You can't, you can't treat it the same. <laughs> right. It's completely different. Right. And that's what I love about it is how different it is. Because Dan, if you get towed into me and you need an alternator, I say all the right things. I make commitments to you. I do a great job. You trust me and you say yes, but your car is in my parking lot. You're kind of stuck. Right, I mean, right. Go uh, captain. Go somewhere else, but it's a little bit, you know. Now, if you choose me for tires and I'm the fourth place you called and I went through everything and you picked me, that's a little bit different story. You did some research. You spent some time and you picked me. Whether or not you really picked the tires, I went through the process and developed a relationship of trust and commitment. And when you've picked me for your tires, when your check engine light kicks on or your suspension's making noise, you have something else, who are you going to go to? The guy- I'm going to go to my tire guy. You're yeah, my tire guy. I'm going to take care of me. Yeah. Yes. You're so my car guy. On tires, it's the launching pad for all your future business. I will say also, selling tires today in June, when we're all busy and we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off, because I know I was there not that long ago, selling tires today leads to a phone call in January or February when we're slow because they either want them rotated or they got something else going on with their car. If you don't sell them today, you're going to be doing a lot of this come January and February, twiddling your thumbs, wondering, oh man, we really got slow. We should have sold more tires back in June, July, and August so we could be busy December, January, and February. And I'm could be. You, that's yeah. It's a form of advertising, build relationships. Yes. But why is it lower? It takes more effort. A lot more effort to sell tires. Yeah, and I, I agree. Absolutely. Just to back up my claim about the, uh, the statistics, that was an assertion I made about the, the closing percentages. I want to prove it to you, right? Uh, and these are no names mentioned, but one of the things that Malloy, that we do at Malloy is we analyze, I don't know, seven, 8,000 phone calls a month for, for clients, right? And we, we, we look at all this stuff. And for prospects, we do an assessment where we analyze this. So here's, I'm going to show you four stores, right? No names mentioned, but here's what we're looking at right here. Store number one, 166 tire sales opportunities on inbound calls. Appointments made, 28 out of 166. That means 138 times the customer said, hey, I'm still looking or if some other, let me get back to you. I got to check with my boss or whatever. Up for whatever. grabs. 
It, right. It blows in the air. We don't know what's going to happen with that. So the closing percentage, 17%. Okay. Store number two, totally different, right? 106 sales opportunities, 40 appointments, 66 missed opportunities, but their overall closing percentage was 38. A little bit above what I said was the average between 20 and 30%. This is 38%. Looks pretty good. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, it's truth. It should be over 50, 60%. <laughs> and Darren, right. Darren's going to address that too. He's got a different, different outlook on it. The 38% looks better, but my mind goes to 66 people got off the phone with us after we did all the work and had the opportunity and we don't know what's happening from there. Right. That's right. Anyway, I'll let you keep going. Yeah. Just two more of these to look at, right? Yeah. Um, here's one. This is a shocker. This, this is a shocker, right? 23 sales opportunities, one made appointment. 4% close rate, real data, folks, right? Here's an, and by the way, all these companies have big signs on the building that say tires. These tires, yeah. <laughs> tires, tires, tires. It's true. Here's another one, 34 sales opportunities, nine appointments made, 25 missed, 26%. Real data, okay? So how do we combat this, my friend? How do we, how do we get the, 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 like you said, it was like tire sales opportunities and how do we convert them? Mm -hmm. it, it's, you got to talk have, about the mindset. It's the mindset. And then you got to have the language to back it up. But the mindset, that's what drives it. I, I don't know how many years ago, whatever meeting it was, I can just remember my dad addressing, you know, all our sales team and our stores. And he would say it all the time. We don't lose a tire deal ever. And then he would probably say, period, we do not miss. I am telling you guys, this is coming from my dad. I'm telling you guys, we will match any price. We will order any tire. We will do anything we can. There is no, re I am, as an owner, I am removing all the reasons why you can't get this tire deal. Match Costco, whatever it takes. You, you want that customer. It was about the customer, not about the tire sale. Yeah. yeah. And really it was like, oh, match Costco. Okay, we got to sell the tires at cost. And we're only going to collect 50 bucks to install. That doesn't seem very smart. It's like, okay, for an hour in the Bay, we're going to do the inspection or you're going to book an oil change and we're going to make how much gross profit? $6 for the same thing. And then there's no loyalty, but we're going to sell them tires and we're going to make $50 gross profit and do the inspection. And now we've locked them in for the next three to five years to come back to us for all their tire service, all their rotation. When that little TPMS light pops on in the winter time, because the the outside temperature has come down, the air is contracted, the light goes on. Who are they going to come back to for a visit? The people who sold them tires. Yes. And they come in, you get to air their tires up real quick and say, hey, it was just a little bit low. It's cold. Have a great day. Enjoy that cup of coffee. Anything you need, we'll see you when you're ready. I'm here for you. Well, I love I love the mindset. You know, it's like a, a baseball player gets up at bat, you know, and just says, look, I'm getting a hit. I'm going to get it. I can hit this guy. I'm going to get a hit off this guy. You know, and here, here you are saying, if that phone rings, if that phone rings and there's a tire, any prospect really on the other end of the line, it's just not tires. We're talking about tires today, but this goes for any, any sales opportunity that comes in on the phone. They're coming in, period, mm -hmm. end of story. Yeah. That's and, the approach. And you really have to, as an individual who's a service advisor or a salesperson or whatever everybody calls their people, their employees, you have to truly look within yourself and really honestly determine and realize that getting this deal or not getting this deal ultimately falls on me as the individual. Because if I got an owner in a business that's saying match any price, we'll do whatever we can to get it. And I don't get it. There's, I need to figure out how to make this happen. So it is, Dan, when I answer the phone every time, thank you for choosing McClay's Tire and Automotive. This is Darren, how can I help you? And they'd say, oh yeah, Darren, I, I need to get a price on tires. The world would halt. It would pause. And I would say in my mind, oh, you're buying them for me. Whether you know it right now or not, <laughs> this deal is done. I love I'm it. become your best friend in the tire and automotive industry. And I truly believed it. And our people did too. But and then the other thing is you express it to them. You see, it's, I'm clear that, that most people in the industry, and I've been doing this for 25 years, and I've never met anybody that didn't want to help people. 
yep. from the service advisors, technicians, owner operators, man, everybody wants to help people. The difference is, in my opinion, some people learn how to express their commitment and uh, some don't. Right. And that's we're going to get to that in a, in a little bit. But that what you're describing to me is, oh, wow, yeah, this is it. And then you follow it up because you expressed your commitment. Exactly. Learning how to communicate yeah. what's inside. That's what it's all about. And it starts with, oh, I can help you with that. I'm no, I taught I taught when, when we got together, we, we, just so everybody knows that that you were a Malloy client. Actually, we, we left that piece out, but I think it's important for this conversation, you know, with folks that. Um, that I cold called your dad one day and uh, and he I started telling him talking with him about the language of commitment and making commitments and building trust and credibility and all this and and he got off the phone and then next thing you know we're in a meeting with you and your uncle and your dad and you became clients so we worked together for about 10 years yeah what kind of impact did the language of commitment have on on uh, on your business from where oh. we started in like 2010 2011 sometime in there and yeah, it's, it's it's huge because just like what I said, that was our mindset. But how do we instill that in our people? Because we're great at what we do, but we're, we're not necessarily, you know, as business owners, we were not trainers. That's not where we came from. But you brought a process together that really helped us put together. How do we communicate what we're all about inside, which I can talk. Yes, right. That's the key right there. And technology and all this. But I really just want you to know as a customer, hey, I know you call a lot of places. I am going to figure this out for you. I'm going to get you the right product. I'm going to get you the right service. I want to help you. How do we cut out all the other info and data and go to, I'm committed to you. From and this day forward, Darren, I am going to be your car guy and your tire guy. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you can count on me. Yep. It separates you from the pack. Yes. You know, I want to, I just want to go over this infographic that we use in our training programs uh, to teach, okay? And what I discovered, I guess about maybe 12, 13, 14 years ago was uh, that I discovered, I observed there were three layers of communication taking place across all industries, right? Especially in the auto repair and tire industry, okay? And so I just, there's three layers, here they are, automatic layer, info and data and commitment, okay? Now, I want to start with automatic, the automatic layer of communication and just share with people. Automatic, I call it automatic because I, I could hear it and measure it in the, with the tools that we have. I could measure that this was in fact true. And here's what I mean by automatic. The body is a machine and we all live in our bodies, right? The spirit, our spirit lives in the body. The body is a machine for, for what? Survival, number one. Mm -hmm. But that means that the, that, that our, our blood pressure temperature control, waste elimination, our sight, smell, hearing, taste, our nervous system, our breathing, our heart rate, all of it is fully automatic. Guess what else is automatic? Much of the communication that we engage in is fully automatic. That means no thought involved. I'm going to prove it to you. So I want this. I'm going to a little, little, little quiz for everybody that's here. Not a quiz, a little demonstration, if you will, to prove this point of how automatic we are. I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to just to type in the chat box your answer okay to this question without thinking about it just type it in here's the first question ready what color is a ferrari type it in i'm just going to wait a minute of course the answer is always red. It just happens to you. Some people say silver, gray, black, whatever, but yellow. But 99.9% .9 of the time they say red and nobody thought about it. It just popped up. It came in. Another one. What food do you eat when you go to the movies? Popcorn. It happens to you. You don't think about it. It lives. The answer lives in your body. So that you take it a next step. Let's talk about how much is an oil change? $59.95, $69.95. We have three types of oil, whatever. It's automatic. We don't think about it. You know, how much is an alignment? Boom, $109.95, $99.95, whatever. No thought involved. And, and so it's, it, it's interesting because 
what people are on automatic mode about is the next layer. So we're machines for information and data. And, and why this is important is because we, most dealers that we have worked with over the years, and there's a lot of them now because I've been doing this for 20 years, right? Most of them are locked in the information and data age because of what I just described. Their people are knowledgeable, but they, they spew out information and data and tech talk, and they have technical conversations and price con all day long. The missing link is what we were talking about before is the commitment. We talk about commitment a lot here in the Malloy company because the only time commerce happens is when you, Darren McClay, as a tire sales guy, exchange commitments with the customer. That's the only time it happens, right? And exchanging, if you just give a price, there's no commitment present in a price. So if I tell you the tire is, uh, you know, uh, what, one seventy nine ninety five each, or however you package it, right? It's there's no commitment present. Or if I give you an alignment price, there's no commitment present in that. It's just data. It's just information. What what cust? In my opinion, I want you to comment on this. What customers really, really want more than anything is somebody like you that would look them right in the eye and make a big, 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 bold commitment to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because that's different from everything else they're getting. Exactly. You and would. the competition, the competition, everybody, and I can just, again, I've been doing this for, I've analyzed more than a million business conversations. I can tell you that 99% of all the dealers out there live in the information and data layer and automatic layer. Nobody is in the commitment layer except our clients. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, I don't want to make it, some people have figured it out and they, they figured it out along the way, you know, so I want to, you know, that's true. That's absolutely true. But I had at one, at one point in my career, I had over a hundred stores. I, I was a partner in a company with 104 stores, a thousand employees. And I'll tell you in 104 stores, we had nobody with the whole idea, the notion of commitment didn't exist. It was all about price, 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 price. And we had really smart people. So we had all kinds of technical information to give out. But anyway. Now, how do we bridge the gap? We have to start becoming commitment based. We have to embrace the whole idea, in my opinion. What our model is all about, what our program is all about is, you know, becoming and I can help you with that company. And being able to express, so I can help you with that. Because I can help you with that as a first step in making a commitment. Yes, I can help you with that. Matter of fact, if anybody on this call wants to do a strategy session with us, right, I will give you stickers. I will mail you out stickers that you can put by your phone. Because the first thing, if, if I were coaching your team, that I would want them to say, my own team, when I was in Toledo, I managed eight stores in Toledo for a couple of years. And I trained them. First thing I want you to say, yes, I can help you with that. And I can help you with that today or tomorrow, whatever time frame. But that's a commitment. I can help you today is a commitment. Rock solid commitment. That's what people want more than anything. And so the challenge for uh, owner operators out there and for business people and managers is to teach people how to articulate their commitment. And the best way to do that, that I've discovered, is to start with, yes, I can help you with that. And so see this how is the, the takeaway. Once, once I learned that, see, now I have a smile on my face and I stopped smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I would still That's true. put my drinks all over my papers, but I stopped smoking and I smiled. Yeah, you, yeah, you still had the donuts here, too, right yeah. on the counter. Yeah. Yes. That's very good. You did learn something, mm -hmm. right? So our offer, our offer to anybody out there that listens to this webinar is simple. Start out with a language assessment. We would come in and we would analyze language and calculate the closing percentages, not just on tires, but on everything and give you the data, kind of like we gave you a snapshot before, There's much more to that, okay? And after we get, after we, we, do, uh, we do the assessment by listening to calls, right? Then we would listen with you we would get together with you and your, your senior leadership team and managers, whatever. And we would listen to calls and show you and give you feedback based on 
how frequently people are making commitments. And then we would offer you a power sales training classroom session where Darren or myself or some of our early trainers would come out and work with you in a classroom environment and, and teach the theory and philosophy about the language of commitment. Um, then we have power sales training weekly. Because what you'll what you'll discover in, be, in going from being a commit uh, a excuse me an information based company to a commitment it takes a little bit of time, it does take time. It can be done. It's easy. It's not difficult. It just takes it takes practice. We have to reprogram the machine, if you will, right? And we have tools. We have uh, we have ways of, of collecting the calls, and we have ways of analyzing the calls and producing the reports. And then people would meet with 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 Darren on a on a monthly basis and review the results and uh, and listen to more calls, et cetera. And uh, and we produce reports that helps you. So I liken it like this: with our we have you have most of the dealers have KPI reports produced by the their accounting systems and their POS system. We provide you with the the language and the commitment KPIs because it's these commitment KPIs that produce all the other KPIs. All the KPIs you study and you listen to were generated moments of time when people were communicating. Any thoughts, Darren, on that? Oh, for sure. It, it all comes from, everything you're seeing is after the fact. We've got to focus on the training that leads to all those numbers. So, and, and I just think, you know, I, I was talking about it, uh, was it earlier this morning? Yeah, me, Thomas and Michael were running a training um, session on tires earlier today and just you know people that are new to the industry or are new to this or got moved to a different store the fastest way to build up your customer base as an individual salesperson and also for your business is to start selling people tires that creates that relationship they come back and it's you got to focus on your mindset and the language that you're using to express that mindset to create all those kpis that you're talking about you got to put the focus in on the training and um I think the best people could best if, if, if I had those thousand employees again, I would train them on the language of commitment. I didn't have it back then 25 years ago. The best you could hope for as a business owner operator, my opinion, is that every employee comes in ready, willing and able and capable and skilled at making commitments to take care of each other and take care of the customers. Secondary is all the pricing and information and data and technical and all that. That's most important is this commitment piece, my opinion. I've written a book about it. And here, here's my offer. I, we, I just want to help people. I want to help dealers. I know you do. That's why we're doing this. That's why we do this work. If you sign up, if anybody on this call or anybody listening to this webinar later signs up for a strategy session, I will give you a copy of the book. I will give you stickers. I want to help, not these stickers. <laughs> <laughs> right. These stickers. <laughs> yes. I would give you those stickers. That's what we'll do, you know, and uh, no charge. I'll send you a copy of the book. That's what I want to do. And others, if you want to buy, you can buy them at, uh, at Amazon. So we we're, we got one, one and a half minutes left to go. We've, we're, we're right on time, Darren. Anything you want to say to button this up, my friend? No, I, I just think, you know, a lot of us, when it comes to overall tires in your business, I think a lot of us probably know that we're not focused on it. We're not doing as good a job as we can. And if we shine the light on it and we do some training and some focus and we have an approach, the approach that we have, I created for people outside the industry to come in and be able to be very good and very quick to learn. And it's the same approach I used when I sold my last set of tires ever. So from beginner to advanced, our approach works all the way through. And I, and I, I love seeing people progress and get better. And it just, it makes me happy about what we're doing. And that's what I'm here for. I want to help everybody. Thank you, my friend. All right. Awesome. 22947. We kept our I promise know. with you. <laughs> We're going to sign off now. Thank you guys and gals for being here. We appreciate you. We are here for you. And um, like I said, you can go to the website, MalloySales.com, sign up for a strategy session if you want to do that. And, uh, and uh, we'll send you the book and some of the stickers. Peace. Have a great week. Bye. Thank you, Darren. Of course. See you. You're the man. He's the tire guru. Trust me. I try. <laughs>